America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring young America's favorite couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Let's look in and see what the Nelsons of 1847 Rogers Road are doing. It's quite late at night. So late, I can't even see what time it is. Oh, thank you. It's two o'clock in the morning. And all we can hear are the customary sounds of night. The grandfather's clock in the hall, a couple of crickets chirping on the lawn, the distant screams of the pedestrians on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> We tiptoe up the carpeted stairs and peek into the bedroom. Aren't we devils? <laughs> the stillness there is interrupted only by the gentle ticking of the clock. Well, wait a minute. I think I hear Harriet's voice. And I think I really should get that hat because I haven't had a thing to wear with my navy blue outfit except that old hat I bought last year. And, oh, besides, that really doesn't go with my navy blue anyhow. Ozzy replies... Oh, no. He sure falls asleep fast. Well, I may as well go to sleep myself. Mm. Oh, goodness, the faucet in the bathroom's dripping. I'll never fall asleep now. Ozzy. Ozzy, dear, wake up. Good night, dear. Ozzy, there's a drip in the bathroom. <laughs> I say there's a drip in the bathroom. Doesn't he know this is a private home? <laughs> oh, please, dear. It's the faucet in the bathroom. Would you get up and shut it off? It'll keep us awake all night. I don't hear a thing. Good night, dear. <laughs> Oh, honey, I'm sure the faucet is dripping. Aren't you going to get up and turn it off? Well, let's wait until the next time you hear burglars, and then I can get up for both of them at the same time. Uh, Ozzy, it may flood the bathroom. We could both be drowned in our sleep. Okay, okay. Go to the closet, and on the top shelf there's a box. Get it. What's in it? Water wings. <laughs> very funny, very funny. You mean you're not going to turn off the faucet? Well, darling, it isn't bothering me. Why should I bother it? Live and let live, I always say. Oh, you dog. And let sleeping dogs lie. You mean to say you can sleep with that going on? I told you I don't hear any dripping. Oh, for goodness sakes, listen. <laughs> I don't hear a thing. There, did you hear that? I don't hear a thing. It must be your imagination. I didn't hear that one either. <laughs> Ozzie Nelson, you know you hear it just as well as I do. Okay, the faucet is dripping a little. So what? I'm tired. Oh. So you won't do a little thing like shutting off the faucet for me. The day of chivalry is certainly dead. In those days, a man had never let his wife do any menial work. Listen, if these were the days of chivalry, I'd probably be a knight, wouldn't I? And I'd have to go out and fight dragons and things, wouldn't I? Well, I suppose so. Well, if I'm out fighting dragons, wouldn't you have to get up and shut off the faucet? <laughs> oh, that's not one bit funny. I'm not kidding. This is going a little too far. You don't love me anymore. Oh, darling, where's your sense of humor? Of course I love you, and you know it. I love you more than anything in the whole wide world. I think you're the most wonderful wife a man ever had. Now go and shut off the water. I will not. The floor is cold, and you know it. Well, it's cold on my little piggy wiggies too, you know. <laughs> I tell you what I'll do. I'll show you that chivalry isn't dead. I'll be a gentleman about it. I'll play you gin rummy, loser goes. Gin rummy? 
Tommy, we haven't got any cards. I'll get the cards. Where's the light? Oh, there. The cards here in the dresser, Harriet? I think they're in the hall table. Oh. They're not here, Harriet. Try the medicine cabinet in the bathroom. Funny place for cards in the bathroom. And while you're there, turn off the faucet. Oh. <laughs> okay, there. Harriet, I can't find the cards here. Never mind the cards. Never mind, but how are we going to decide who... I've been tricked, and by my own wife, too. <laughs> well, anyway, dear, the faucet is shut off. <sighs> I might as well admit it was beginning to bother me, too. Boy, I'm sleepy. Oh, this bed feels good. Thank you very much, dear. No, nothing at all. <laughs> I'm sorry I tricked you, Ozzy. Oh, that's all right. Now we can sleep. Oh, good hours. Good night, dear. Good night. For the love of Mike. Obstinate little gadget, isn't it? Wait a minute, I got an idea. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I'll be right back. There, that did it. What'd you do? Honey, I must admit that I fixed that leak with a simple little device that the average husband wouldn't have thought of. What'd you do, leave a finger there? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's a very simple psychological matter. Since I couldn't stop the drip, I merely turned the water on a little harder... And since a steady stream of water makes little or no noise, presto, I have eliminated the disturbing elements. Oh, Ozzy, you're wonderful. And if you should hear the gentle flowing of the water, just imagine you're out camping by a mountain stream, and you'll fall right off to sleep. Darling, sometimes I think you're an absolute genius. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're right at that. <laughs> oh, good night, dear. It's morning already. Ah, uh, I just woke up, too. It's a lovely day. Well, might as well hop out of bed and get dressed. Holy smokes, this is the worst early morning fog in history. <laughs> well, Harriet, the room is flooded. Flooded? Yes, hurry, get dressed. Quick, grab your shoes as they float by. <laughs> oh, something must have happened with that faucet. You better get to the bathroom and see what's wrong. Oh, I just happened to think of something. Harriet, remember last night when I figured out a way to stop that drip by letting the water run a little faster? Yes. Well, even the greatest of scientists on the eve of world-shaking discoveries often overlook matters of less magnitude in their zeal and absorption. You mean you left the stopper in the sink? Right. <laughs> well, Mr. Scientist, you'll just have to get busy and clean up this mess before you get any breakfast today. Okay, it's my own fault, and I'm perfectly willing to take the consequences. But how am I going to get rid of all this water? Shall I get an 1847 Rogers Brothers silver-plated spoon and ladle it up? <laughs> well, you could, dear. But a simpler way would be a pail and two mops. Well, I don't know much about this. What do I do with the mops? Well, just make believe it's New Year's Eve. Make believe it's New Year's Eve? Mm-hmm. Just ring out the old and ring in the new. <laughs> What a job that was. Morning, Pop. Hello, David. Ready for breakfast now, dear? Yep. All through upstairs? Mm-hmm. Didn't take you so long after all. No, just three and a half hours. I am now an expert on mopping up operations. <laughs> well, here's your breakfast, dear. I'll just have the toast and the eggs. Don't you want the orange juice? Please, no liquids. <laughs> Will you excuse me, dear? I want to call a plumber to come over and fix the faucet. Well, you're not serious, are you? Well, of course I am. Well, you don't think I'd be so idiotic as to have a plumber come all the way over here just to fix a leaky faucet? Well, why not? Last week you called in an electrician just to change an electric light bulb. Go ahead. Make fun of me. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing now? No, honestly, honey. 
You're a very, very, very clever fellow. And I love you dearly, but there's no sense in having the house wash away. Now, Harriet, stop talking nonsense. House wash away. We have a little flood around here, and everybody gets frightened to death. Nobody was frightened. Oh, no? Then who hung those water wings in the bathroom? Those aren't water wings. Oh. <laughs> Gloria's probably waiting to clear away these dishes. Oh, Gloria! Gloria! Did you call me, Mrs. Nelson? <laughs> yes, I did, Gloria. We're finished breakfast. Hey, by the way, your room is exactly under ours. Did the water leak through? Well, the water leaked through, but nothing got wet. <laughs> you see, I sleep with my mouth open. <laughs> You swallowed the water? Well, I don't know, but come to think of it this morning when I ate a piece of toast, I could hear it splash. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Nelson, how did the flood start? Well, Mr. Nelson thought it'd be nice to let the water run and dream we were out camping beside a mountain stream. Oh, sure. It was all my fault. <laughs> I went camping once. Way up on a mountain top. Oh, my, that sounds romantic. Oh, it was romantic. One night I was sitting under the stars, and someone sat down beside me, and he put his arm around me. And we sat there, not saying a word, just looking at the stars. And then the moon came up just in time. Well, what do you mean? Five minutes more and I'd have been engaged to a grizzly bear. <laughs> oh, it must have been frightening when the moon came up and you were sitting there with a grizzly bear. It must have been. He ran like everything. <laughs> well, I hope the flood in the house didn't do too much damage. Oh, I don't think so. Nothing really serious. You should have seen that water dripping down the stairs this morning. Well, I'm sorry you didn't wake us, Gloria. Try to remember, always call us any time you see anything unusual in the house. Well, that's not so unusual. Um, my goodness, if water dripping down the stairs isn't unusual, what is? Water dripping up the stairs? <laughs> I see what you mean. Well, Gloria, be prepared for anything around here this morning because Mr. Nelson insists he's going to fix the leak himself. Mrs. Nelson's just jealous because she's not mechanically inclined. Are you mechanically inclined, Gloria? Oh, yes. <laughs> I could go for a nice mechanic any time. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be surprised if we had to call on your boyfriend, Elmer, before Mr. Nelson's through. Oh, but Elmer's no good at fixing things. Why, didn't you tell me the other day that Elmer was a handyman? Uh, I just meant that he only lives two blocks away. He's a handyman. <laughs> well, I better clean away these dishes. And I better go upstairs and fix that leak. Can I go with you, Pop? Now, you see that, Harriet? You're afraid I'm going to flood the house, but thank goodness at least my son has confidence in me. Come on along, David. I'll be right with you, Dad, as soon as I get my sailboat. <laughs> Yeah, it's really leaking, all right. Yeah, but are you sure you can fix it? There's nothing to it, David. You just watch. There isn't anything your old man doesn't know about plumbing. I know this sink like a book. Uh, you can assist Daddy in the operation if you like. Gee, thanks, Dad. Now we go to work. Wrench. Wrench. Pliers. Pliers. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. Hammer. Hammer. Iodine. <laughs> I think maybe I'd better go with this a little different way. Aha, uh -huh, here we are. This will take care of the old leak. Now watch, David. I just put the monkey wrench on this pipe, and I twist it to the right. Turning to the right always shuts things off, David. Are you sure, Dad? Positive. That's how all pipes are made. Twisting to the right shuts them off. And I hit the monkey wrench with a hammer now to turn it real hard. Pop! 
What if that loosens the whole thing up? It won't, son. Are you sure, Pop? I'm as sure of that as I am that tomorrow will be a beautiful day. Well, that's California for you. Well, as the walrus might have said to the carpenter, now it's my turn to speak to those of you who have been saving for the day when you could go to your silverware dealers, ask for 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate, and get it. That day will be here very soon, too. If you could see the town of Meriden, Connecticut, where the home of 1847 Rogers Brothers is, you'd be sure of that. For in Meriden today, the harsh, urgent clamor of war machinery has given place to the quiet hum of silversmithing. The skilled hands that broke all records turning out fighting weapons are again engaged in the task they love, the creation of America's finest silver plate. Soon the silver plate itself will be at your silverware dealers, as lovely in design, as incomparable in craftsmanship as always. We feel sure you'll want to wait that short while that before you buy any new silverware for your home, you'll want to see the famous silver plate of the 1847 Rogers Brothers. It's time for those lovely singing stars, the famous King Sisters. If you ain't wrong, you're right. If it ain't dark, Light. If you ain't sure, you might. You gotta be this or that. If it ain't full, it's blank. If you don't spin, you bang. If it ain't big, it's frank. You gotta be this or that. Who can it be if it ain't me? I know it's not your mother. If you don't lie, I'll go. If it ain't yes, it's no. You gotta be this or that. Is it big or small? Is it screen or fall? Is it fresh or pan? Is it fresh or can I do? Gotta go before I go. Gotta be this or that. sure in a mess at the Nelson household at 1847 Rogers Road. Ozzie's attempt to fix something has led to complete disaster. Instead of fixing the leak in the pipe, Ozzie has succeeded in breaking it and causing a small-sized flood. As our scene opens, our hero is entering a nearby plumbing shop. Say, could you come up to our house right away? We've got a busted pipe that needs fixing. 
Uh, well, I'll tell the boss about it. Well, what about you? Aren't you a plumber? Me? No, I ain't no plumber. I'm just a plumber's helper. I ain't allowed to fix nothing. I'm only allowed to watch it being fixed. Well, look, this is rather urgent. Okay, okay. Just relax, mister. Give me your name and address. I'll put it on the list. And as soon as the boss can look at it, you'll be taken care of. That's the best I can do. Well, the name is Nelson, and the address is 1847 Rogers Road. Try and rush it, will you, because it's an emergency. Okay, okay. Uh, you got that address, haven't you? 1847 Rogers Road. Okay, okay. Everything is an emergency. The guy's got a little leak, so it's an emergency. Some people don't seem to realize there's a... Hey, wait a minute. The war's over. <laughs> hey, boss! Boss! Here's another address for you to stop at. You better hurry. It's an emergency. Hmm, Nelson, 1847 Rogers Road. Thanks, I'll go right over. Yes? Mr. Nelson? That's right. Well, may I come in? You're next on my list. <laughs> I'm next on your list? Yes. Didn't you send for a plumber? Well, yes, but I... 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 <laughs> is, is something the matter? Well, I... <laughs> I, I just wasn't expecting a lady plumber. Uh, plumber, uh, pl uh, tell me, have you plumbed long? A few years, and I like it. When I started, I never thought I'd feel this way about plumbing. <laughs> thought I'd feel this way about a plumber. <laughs> oh, I understand you have a broken pipe in the bathroom. We have? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Well, we, of course. Uh, Didn't you call them? me, Bush. I got all the tools here. Oh, thank you. Just lay them down there, Tyrone. <laughs> and, uh, Tyrone, would you please find the water shut off? Okay, boys. And keep in touch with me. Okay, boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I was so confused, but, well, it's just that most plumbers are men, and you're, well, uh, you're quite the opposite. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry that I've upset you so. Oh, that's all right, really. After all, in these times, women drive buses, they work on railroads, they use riveting machines. <laughs> They do just about everything. That's right. Who knows? Someday a few of them might even learn to cook. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now, I, I think I'd really better get to work on that leaky pipe. Hi, Ron, calling the boss. What's that? Oh, that's our portable communication system. Sort of a walkie-talkie. Saves us a lot of time. Boss to Tyrone. Come in, Tyrone. <laughs> I think I found that water shut off, boys. There's a knob here that looked like the opening to a coal chute. But then I remembered that in California they. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Coal shoots here, don't they? Keep trying, Tyrone. Is somebody here, Ozzy? Oh, yes, dear. It's the plumber. Oh, good. I'd like to watch you. Oh. Are you the plumber? That's right. I'm the plumber. <laughs> oh, you must tell me who does your hair. It's adorable. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you like it. I had my hair done at the Pierre Salon. Uh, that pipe is... Pierre uh... specializes in lady plumbers. In fact, he calls this the lady plumber hairdo. Oh, well, it's really beautiful. That big pompadour in the center and the braids on each side. It's so romantic. Yes. It represents a water boiler surrounded by stovepipes. <laughs> Tyrone, calling the boss. Come in. Yes, Tyrone? I think I found out where the water shutoff is. I'm down in the basement, 
And in here, they got a sort of a den, you see. And in the corner of the den, they got a small bar, and there's some... Some, uh... I'll call you back. <laughs> Look, I don't, I don't mean to be personal, but that perfume you're wearing, is that a Pierre creation, too? Say, it's quite a leak oh, and they've yes, got Oh, yes, Pierre it's... didn't feel that those imported perfumes fit my profession. You know, temptation, surrender, follow me. And he made that special perfume for Lady Plummer? That's right. What is it called? Come here before I slug you. <laughs> oh, my. This Pierre sounds original. Uh, pardon me, that leak in the pipe, it's only covered by rags. And oh, our... my goodness, we forgot about the leak. Oh, dear, say, I wonder what happened to my helper, Tyrone. Calling Tyrone. Tyrone. Tyrone? Happy New Year! <laughs> Would you please inform our hostess that we are running out of ice cubes? Oh, dear. Something tells me I'll have to fix this without Tyrone. Well, how are you coming along? Oh, fine, thanks. You know, Mr. Nelson, I'm the kind of plumber that doesn't believe in taking chances. Some plumbers might try fixing this by putting in another washer. Some plumbers might try fixing this by putting in another piece of pipe. What are you doing? Installing a new sink. <laughs> day this has been. Sure is good to get in bed. You betcha. I never thought when I heard that faucet dripping last night that it would lead to such complete reconversion. No, neither did I. <laughs> what a routine. The new wash bowl and, and the new tub that you had to get to match the wash bowl. Yeah, I know. Seems an awful lot to go through just to stop a dripping faucet. Oh, <sighs> well, let's get some sleep, shall we? Okay. Oh. Good night, dear. Good night. Harriet. Yes, dear? Do you hear anything? Not a thing. Neither do I. Good night. <laughs> and Harriet of 1847 Rogers Road will be back in just a moment. Meantime... Oh, Mr. Smith, did you ever hear of that man, Tantalus? Oh, you mean the character in Greek mythology, the fellow that had all that delicious food put before him, only it was always just out of his reach? That's the man, and that's the way I feel, too. I've been hearing so much about 1847 Rogers Brothers' silver plate, how unusual its designs are, how beautiful and rich-looking. It's got so I dream about owning 1847 silver plate. And then I wake up and realize there isn't any to be had. It's very tantalizing, Mr. Smith. Well, it won't be tantalizing much longer, at least not in the same way. Pretty soon you will be able to buy this lovely silver plate. Then the tantalizing part will be which pattern to choose. Well, the first love pattern looks very beautiful in the pictures I've seen in the magazines. The pattern itself is even more beautiful. Notice when you see it how richly raised the ornament is, how deeply etched. That kind of craftsmanship was formerly found only in solid silver. It took 1847 Rogers Brothers to carry it out in silver plate. I know. I've heard they've done some wonderful things with silver plate. Be patient a little longer and you can see what they've done firsthand. 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate will be at your silverware dealer soon. Wait until then. It's well worth waiting for, believe me. Ozzy. Ozzy! Yeah, I hear a dripping noise, too. How do you like that? We had a whole new sink put in, 
and I still hear that dripping noise. But, Ozzy... I might have known better than to trust a woman plumber. She puts in a whole new sink, and there goes that dripping noise again. But, Ozzy... Please, Harriet, don't try to protect her just because you happen to be a woman, too. I know a drip when I hear one. I'm plenty sore. Can you imagine... Ozzy, will you please look down at the end of the bed? Your hot water bottle's leaking. International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, invite you to listen again next Sunday to the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, with songs by the King Sisters and music by Ozzy Nelson's orchestra. And don't forget, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. This program originates in the Hollywood studios of the Columbia Broadcasting System and is also broadcast over the Trans-Canada Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This adventure of Ozzy and Harriet will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Appearing in support of Ozzy and Harriet were B. Benaderet, John Brown, Joel Davis, and Viola Vaughn. Original music was composed by Billy May. Vern Smith speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.